wig makers are historically actually uh, barbers, hairdressers, and wig makers, really facilitating all of the hair needs of the 18th century gentlemen and ladies. Wig makers are producing uh, wigs full, basically prosthetic heads of hair, as well as hair attachments for both ladies and gentlemen. As wig makers, we are by necessity barbers and hairdressers as well. Barbers shave gentlemen's faces on a day in, day out basis. Perhaps not the same gentleman all the time, but uh, it's enough to be stable. It's that professional shave we see today. And as hairdressers, we're cutting and styling the hair on the head. We use materials from all over the world, including linens and silks imported through our agents in London, as well as uh, human hair from Northern Europe, horse hair from Central Asia, and Angora goat hair from the Ottoman Empire. All of the fiber that we work with is imported for the highest quality, despite the fact that some of it would be locally available, the local stuff just tends not to be of the same caliber. What drives the cost of a wig is more about the length, color, and quality of the hair. Human hair isn't by definition more valuable than horse hair or angora goat hair. What really is driving the cost is how scarce it is. Longer hair, paler hair, better quality hair are more expensive, but most wigs are going to be made for day wear, day-to-day -day use, and subsequently they're made of a darker fiber. Gray, associated with the business class, but more like that expensive business suit we find in the business world today. The process begins with the client consenting to a clean shaven head. Once the head is shaven, we measure it to determine any lumps, bumps, indentations, and extrapolate those out onto a blockhead. Once we have that blockhead and that outline tape nailed into place to really fine tune the fit, we pull a hand knotted silk or linen net, made like a fishing net on a fine scale, over that form and stitch it together. We then take more measurements and go to a tressing frame where we're weaving a pinch of hair at a time on three silk threads to build up the individual rows or wefts of hair. And those wefts are individually stitched on one by one, very much like shingling a roof, working your way up and forward from the nape of the neck to the peak at the forehead. A completed wig could have anywhere from 10 to 100 wefts of hair, but we find 25 to 60 wefts to be most common. The final two wefts of hair are actually stitched on around that outside perimeter of the wig once the almost constructed wig is off the blockhead, and those final wefts are hiding any of that edge work. We find men and women both working within spaces like wig shops. However, we do find that it is a masculine dominated trade. Edward Charlton's wig shop here in Williamsburg, one of eight that was here in the city in the 1770s, has at least a staff of five. Eventually, we do end up finding wigs on men of literally all walks of life, from free men of color to enslaved men to children as young as seven here in Williamsburg to dock workers, lawyers, professors, and kings. But due to that clean-shaven first step, we tend not to find women engaging with this fashion because most women are just not all that excited about the prospect of shaving their heads and wearing someone else's hair instead. Wig making is the sort of thing that while modern wig making does exist, doesn't have the same sort of direct one-to-one -one analog in the modern world. A lot of what we did historically and what we still practice today has largely fallen away. People don't understand this aspect of the fashion world in the same way that they understand things like shoes or tailoring. As a result, uh, we think it's very important to preserve wig making to provide a better window and insight into the thought processes of these people in the 18th century. It really is about putting your best foot forward it's about presenting the best version of yourself to garner other people's respect. But the vast majority of individuals, 90% of men and nearly all women, are growing out their own hair, having it styled on a regular basis. So wigs are a means to an end. They are ultimately just a way to achieve that same self-expression that we all strive for today, that respectability in the eyes of others.